right. We want to start on page 85. Page 85. We want to look down at the bottom where it says poor help. Poor help on page 85. You know, last week we talked about anxiety. We talked about how anxiety is a form of stress. Stress can cause many health issues. Uh, that can cause a whole lot of problems. Uh, let's look at some of them. I'm going to go through all of them. It says, of course, one of the most intriguing ways that fear is demonstrated in our lives is the way it shows up in our bodies. World. Shows up in our bodies. I've known people, Dr. Stanley is talking here, I've known many people who appear content on the outside but whose internalized apprehensions result in high blood pressure, heart, respiratory problems, and look at the rest of these issues physically. Look at all the rest of these. Can come from anxiety. Wow. Anxiety, I'm glad you asked me. Anxiety. Is weary, stress, fear, all these elements is a form of anxiety. And what he's trying to get us to do, and I, I, I want to really put a trademark on this part, is that we as believers, and God did not intend for us to be an exact crime. Because the Bible says, in 1 Peter 5 and 7, it says, cast all your cares. One chapter says, all your anxieties upon him, for he cared for you. So we are to give it to God and leave it with God and don't go back and get up. <laughs> Yes, sir. We talked about last week. However, we go and pick it up and we give it to God. But we want to learn and give it all to God and let God handle all our fears, worries, and anxieties. Because God wants to be in hell. Third John. Gacia says this, I wish above all things you be in hell and you prosper as your soul prosper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the Bible says that he wants us to be in good health. And it, the Bible says that he wants us to cast all our anxieties, worries, cares upon him. It's time for us to do just that. Mm -hmm. Starting from the man who's teaching to the man, at the, to the person at the back door, right? <laughs> and it's a hard thing because human nature will kick in and cause us to worry, to fear, to be in stress, to be in anxiety, to have panic attacks. All these things. <laughs> Woo, yes, that's no, all that's good. Well, I'm going to have blue in there, but I'm going to ask you. Okay, he asked what a panic attack is. Before I answer, anybody know? Yes. Talk to me. A panic attack is when a situation arises, even though it may only be in your mind. It affects your health, your mental health, and your physical health. And it determines 
situations and decisions that you make that are not always in your best interest. Amen. Yeah, that's a good job. <laughs> that's right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I say no. That was perfect. Did y'all get that? Yes. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Beautiful. I need to say no more. <laughs> she hit the nail on the head. <laughs> That's what it is, brother. So we have to ask God to help us get past and beyond this so that this doesn't happen to us. Wow. Anybody want to add to that part? You can't. She doesn't tell you. <laughs> She's a teller that doesn't. <laughs> Beautifully done. I ain't going to read the Bible because basically what she said is at the bottom. <laughs> Woo! I need somebody to read. The top part of page 85, just the first paragraph. The first portion, rather, not the first paragraph. First portion, where it says, as we saw in this chapter. Get back, read. 85. Uh-huh, 86. I'm sorry, 86, not 85. I'm going back if I did that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. At the top of 86, where it says, uh, as we saw in the earlier. As we saw earlier in this, this chapter, mm -hmm. if we receive news that requires us to leap to attention or attack in some way or encounter danger, such as coming across a mountain land, or rattlesnake on a hike. Our bodies instantly trigger their defenses. Our heartbeat and respiratory rate quicker. Our cortisol, whatever, and adrenaline increase. Levels increase. The blood and nutrients flow to our muscle groups and limbs are augmented. Augment. Our nervous system is mobilized and our pupils dilate. Stop right there. Look at all what happens. Look at all what happens. Your pupil dilates. Now, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Your pupil dilates. That's like when the ophthalmologist goes and puts stuff in your eyes and your, your pupil dilates. This happens without that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at what I'm trying to get to see tonight. This is what anxiety does to us. This is what fear and worry does to us. It, it causes the body to, to break down. Causes it to break down. Oh my. Mm, mm, mm. This is serious. This is serious. Look at the bottom. Which says number six. Talking about spiritual growth. Somebody read that. The final and potentially most devastating that persistent anxiety in our lives is that it hinders us from becoming all that trouble created. Look at it. It hinders our relationship with the Lord. It hinders our spiritual growth with the Lord. Oh, wow. And this is what anxiety will do. It will cause us and hinder us from having that closeness with God. That real relationship with God. It hinders that. It hinders that. Anybody want to add to this? You got want to add to this? Say about this? When the text hinders us, it doesn't mean it's kind of, I don't know, just so caught up in 
anxiety that you don't make a party or something like that. There you go. Exactly. And that was what it, it, it really does. It stop you got so much anxiety, so much worry, so much fear, so much all this on you. You fail or we fail to pray. As we all do, because now our focus is of the Lord and more on our situation or our circumstances. So therefore it hinders us or stops us from doing what we should be doing to uh, enhance our spiritual growth. Good question. Yes, good question. Anybody else? Mm. Oh, we're gonna go to scriptures now. This this page 87, we're gonna go to some scriptures now. <laughs> We'll go to the scriptures now. It gives, it gives three points here dealing with anxiety. On 87, it says, first, our anxiety deters us from trusting, here it is, trusting the Father and being conformed to his character. In other words, it hinders us from being like him. Oh my, we know that one of the main ways the Lord instructs us, frees us from bondage, and forms, and forms his likeness is in us through difficulties. I often say because it is true, adversity is a bridge to a deeper relationship with God, because it is true, if our hearts are inclined toward Him, the test we experience can fortify our faith. <laughs> I just want to read that one, one that part again. The test we experience can fortify, can strengthen our faith. <laughs> I'm going to take myself a little, let's see if it's part of it. Okay, all right, just, if you, someone would turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, read verse 6 and verse 7. Doesn't matter the translation. Doesn't matter. This will show us the fortif fortification of our faith. Then before you read it, let me, give you, let, me give you, let me give you a uh, uh, some insight into what we're about to read, especially verse 7. <laughs> He's talking about this testing is more precious than gold. Our faith being now, fortified. Now what chapter? Chapter 1. Oh, first. Uh -huh. Now go ahead and read. Please. So be truly <laughs> glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. What's wait, 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 He said, joy. And is it trials? Mm -hmm. And test joy. Now, before you read further, I want to say something. How can you have joy when you're going through a trial? <laughs> Faith. Just Faith. you're right. Faith. It ain't easy. What would you say? Faith. Huh? Faith. You got to trust God. That's the key right there. I, I, I want to tap to both these comments. It's not easy, but we got to trust Him. When you don't see Him, you got to trust Him. Job talks about, said, when I don't see Him, on my right, I don't see him working on my left, I don't see him behind me, I don't see him in front of me. And that's what he said, but yet and still, I still trust him. When I can't see him, I'll trust him. When I can't feel him, I'll yet trust him. And you have to ask, we have to ask God to help us. Because again, it's not easy. When you're going through a devastating trial or test in your life. It is not easy. But I like to say this. Lord, help me. Give me strength to trust you. And teach me how to teach, trust you more. I need 
read you the instructions. Keep reading. Watch this. Listen to this. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. I'm going to use another word. I'm going to use another word. These trials will show that your faith is authentic. <laughs> that you have real faith. Because sometime in a trial, it'll show us where our faith is. <laughs> and it'll show before the trial hits, we think we got faith. We think we're right there in our faith. But when a real devastating trial hits our neighborhood or our house, it really shows us how much faith we really have. Keep reading, sir. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. The text of my faith is more precious and go going through fire. Wow. This is shows us how valuable our faith should be in God. <laughs> because if it's more valuable than, than, than pure gold, <coughs> that's value too. Yeah, hello. <laughs> because if fire purifies the gold, the fire that we go through enhances our faith. Works is dead. Dead. So when you go through trials, your faith is constantly being tested and going faith, uh, being what tested and being being constantly worked. I guess you want to say or strengthened, being strengthened. Mm -hmm. So then you can further on and that's something to keep joy in right there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. But it, but it, but it, 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 it's different. That's that's me. That's me. Let's look at this. It's really difficult, though, to have joy when you're going through. <laughs> but if you notice, them, two, three weeks ago, we were talking about, can you praise him when you're going through? <laughs> because I read the scripture just a few moments ago from Psalms 34 and 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise should continually be in my mouth. In other words, what he's saying, and that's his one translation, he said, every occasion I get, I'll praise him. <laughs> whether the day is good or whether the day is bad, right. I will bless the Lord at all times. And it, it, the scripture does not say, if my day is good, I'll praise him. He said, at all times, I'll bless his name. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. And be glad in it. <laughs> Anybody else want to add to this? Okay, let's go to the next question.